วัสดีเจ้าฮัลโหล I'm Pim k e m a s i n k i from City Life Chiang Mai and I'm very very excited to be here today um, to talk about something that you know I don't know anything about at all obviously uh, marijuana cannabis mm. ganja <laughs> pot weed that's what we're going to talk about so today we're here with Ryan Doran or Baba Fats mm -hmm. that is your mm. nom de plume um, and Marissa Machitelli right so Brian has been a grower for 20 years in where is it Men Mendocino Mendocino County California, California and in Thailand yep and also he's a co-founder of the first medical cannabis farm in Thailand no less it's called Pet Pet Lana Farm Lana Farm sorry I wrote as Pet yeah. Lame Farm which <laughs> really wouldn't be appropriate yeah, no, yeah. definitely not lame no sorry <laughs> he's also host of the Perfect High yes right and Marissa here is the media boss of the perfect high mm -hmm. yeah so marissa and i've known each other for long 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 yeah. time we and don't need to get into numbers at this point yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, just, a couple, just a couple of months but um <laughs> so you've had a lot of incarnations just since you've been here you've I been have. a photographer you've been a a gourmet shopper what do you call it <laughs> uh, like I do uh, high-end tours for people yeah. like uh, buying trips but sometimes it's cultural trips and I write about travel and videotographer yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's storytelling in various formats it's kind of like what you do right I mean you do that too don't I you? certainly yeah. do yeah I certainly <laughs> do but you've also done productions of classical you know concerts, yeah, concerts and yeah. all yeah. sorts of things so now her new role is this which is what yeah. we're going to talk about yeah. so Tell, 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 tell us all a little bit about you know what is your podcast and what is it that you're trying to do. Okay, well, I, I first met Ryan um, about just over a year ago uh, yeah. through mutual friends, and immediately like we hit it off. And then um, a few months later, he started a, a company called Cannabis Agronomics, which is a company that's um, geared towards growing marijuana. Here um, in Thailand. Here, here mm -hmm. in Thailand, yeah. Ryan also has consulted for so many farms all over the country. Like he is a really like. Broad range of knowledge about cannabis business in Thailand at the moment, um, and then a few months later, um, he started a podcast, and um, and then that was like the opportunity for me to come in, and we worked together, and we did like one season of the Perfect High podcast, um, and it was just so incredibly fun. Like um, like I went from not really knowing what was going on to like having a front row seat to like all of the biggest cannabis operations in Thailand, and all of like the biggest players like in the industry. So like the first episode. Um, was in the studio and it was with the founders of Highland, um, who are great friends of Ryan's. Yeah. Okay. So um, maybe you can tell them about that episode. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're yeah. talking about this whole industry by the sounds of it, and uh, I think I, a lot of people like me don't even know that there's an industry. I mean, what what what's going on? Because as far as I knew, it was all illegal until suddenly, I don't know. Uh, is it legal? What's happening? Well, the industry is developing right now. Mm. I mean, uh, you know, prior to, to, to 2018, the industry was all black market. It was all underground. Yeah. Uh, there was a lot of, uh, you know, big shipments coming in from Laos and Burma and stuff like that. So we weren't growing here? Not a lot. Not a lot of the stuff that you saw here in the country actually came from Thailand. Huh. Um, if it was in brick form, it probably came from Laos right. or it, it came across a border. Um, there were people doing small production throughout the country. I mean, it's, it's been like that forever. Um, every single house I've, I've been to that has more than one rye of land, they've got a couple plants over in the corner that they use for their soup, they yeah. use for, for little things like that, not for commercial I production. growing up, you know, it was a normal thing. You'd go to a noodle shop and they'd have, you know, leaves mm. in the soup. Mm. And it was perfectly normal in right. those days, a couple of years ago. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, at the Petlana farm, when we went there, they have a restaurant as well. And one of the things they have is, is like spice packets for noodle soup with, with, yes. ga with ganja oh, in it. Oh, really? So, mm -hmm. yeah. And from what I, I've read is that they have, I mean, they have hundreds of uh, franchises throughout the country right now for their cannabis noodle soup. It's, mm. it's fully Crazy. legal. Um, it's, <laughs> it's legal. It comes from the farm. Um, it's not produced with the flowers of cannabis. It's produced with the leaves. Um, okay, let's go go yep. back then because for some of our viewers who don't know much about weed, marijuana, can you just explain like the basics right now to them? Sure. I mean, well, I mean, the basics of cannabis, it's a, it's a wonderful plant. Um, it has uses for, I mean, you can use the entire plant in, in one way or another. It's uh, from the industrial uses of the fibers, the seeds. Uh, you know, just recently I've seen a market for the leaves, which is very unique here to Thailand. Yeah. What, what, what do you mean? Why is it unique? 
Because, I mean, around the world, we, we would just throw the leaves away. The leaves really don't have a, a significant amount of medicinal uh, qualities. They're not, you know, like, they're just leaves. But they can be used to make clones, right? Well, leaves cannot be used to make clones, no. oh. um, but clones? the stem, uh, the, yeah. you actually need the leaf and the stem. You need a little bit of the stem. Oh, okay. Um, if you just try to clone a leaf alone, it, yeah. it has nowhere for shoots to grow off of it or anything like that. Okay. But um, so why? Do you think it's just because it's now kind of legal and it's a symbolic, you know, it's a symbol that everyone recognizes and people feel a bit naughty using it? Is that, is that what you think it is? It's or very why? gimmicky right now. It's a gimmick. They, people want to say, okay, you know, we've got this yeah. cannabis, we have cannabis teas, and we have cannabis food, and we Everywhere. have all this cannabis stuff. But at the end of the day, it's just the leaves. It's because it's of this bizarre law that the government came up with that you can grow the plant, but then you can use everything but the flower, right? You yes. have to sell the flower back. So then people, To the government. Right. So the only thing that they have to work with is the stems and the leaves, and then right. this came out of it. Yeah. I wish we could have sold it back to them, but it started out that we had to donate all the oh. flowers to the government. Why? Because there was no set, they, they had nothing set up for, they didn't understand the industry. As we're just developing right now, they couldn't say that we're buying your, your cannabis for this price because they had no clue what they were selling it for. They had no clue what it was going into. A lot of it was for research purposes. When was this? Could you give us a kind of a timeline? 2019. 2019, we had our first, uh, we, we started the farm in uh, Petlana and we mm -hmm. donated over two tons of cannabis flour oh. to the government. Oh, that's going to hurt. Uh, yeah, you know, it was. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, was, it, it hurts, but it doesn't, you know. Again, we understand where we're at in the industry. It's, it's helping support the, the people mm. try to understand what cannabis is. Because so, we're, so yeah. we're so young in the commercial cannabis industry here. You know, people think, oh, cannabis, you know, Thai stick, it's the best cannabis in the world. The Thai people have been growing forever. Yes and no. I mean, the, the people that were producing Thai sticks back, you know, back when Thai sticks were coming over through the Vietnam mm. era, um, a lot of those guys are 90 years old plus right now. Um, the knowledge, there's a generation gap in the, the cultivation oh. knowledge and just uh, as soon as they said it was illegal here, it was illegal, it was a bad thing. I mean, I, I've been here for 20 years, 18 years. Right. And I remember using cannabis and you know being as paranoid as you could possibly be. Um, for various reasons. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but it, it has developed a lot. Now, yeah. we're in a stage right now where we're getting people used to cannabis again. Um, they made this really weird law where, again, you had to donate the flowers and they give you the rest of the plant, which really has no use for us. Um, Thai people are innovative, mm. you know? Like, they're like, okay, if you're gonna give us this, well, we'll make some money with that. And they are. And they are. I mean, there's, if you look, I, you look all over Chiang Mai right now, there's a cannabis leaf on every other coffee shop. Yeah. And, um, so true. <clears throat> So they're actually yeah. doing something with it, and I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with it. So where did this impetus come from to, to open? Because it, as you said, it was so strict for so long. I mean, it was, I didn't even think I'd see this in my lifetime. And then suddenly, just boom, bang, right. a couple years. Where, because where the stigma socially against it is that it's such a lowly drug, mm -hmm. right? Like it's, and, and actually, that, that media stems from American propaganda created in Thailand since the mm. 70s, mm -hmm. uh, like like during the Vietnam War time when the drugs were a little out of control. I mean, it was never illegal before yeah. that. Thanks, CIA. <laughs> yeah, thanks, <laughs> Grandpa. <laughs> 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 but so, but yeah, so, so why now? Why? why I mean, where's yeah, this what do you think, recent impetus well, come from? What I've seen, like how it really came into the news, that it really started with the Boom Jai Thai party. Oh. Um, Boom Jai Thai had a huge initiative in uh, 2018 about six plants per household. And I remember that. this yeah. was, uh, I, I, I even spoke in a couple uh, meetings in Parliament where Boom Jai Thai representatives were there, and I was talking about this model. Uh, before they even announced it, the, the California model was six plants per household. Um, and it initiated up with uh, being able to grow six plants per household in order to treat your family with, you know, to uh, use it for your family. Yeah. It quickly switched to being able to grow six plants so that your family can make money. Ah. And um, that was something that kind of went off on a tangent there. Boom Jai Thai started in, in 2018 with their initiative of six plants per, per household. It was really a, a push. Uh, at the time, Kun Anutin was running for prime minister, and um, 
he was using that as a, sort of a you know as a, as a as a ploy to get Thai people on board, and it worked. It worked great. Um, you know, he didn't become prime minister, but what now? He's deputy prime minister, and he's the minister of public health. Yay! Um, yeah, I actually really like the guy. I, I, <laughs> really? I, I, I do. Yeah, he's um, some selfies with him. <laughs> I, um, you know, opinions here or there. I think he's done more for the cannabis industry here in such a short amount of time okay. than than has happened anywhere else in the world. Wow! From the time, if we look at California, for instance, California put the medical laws in place in 1996, 1997. And they didn't legalize recreational cannabis until 2018. You know, wow. it took them 20 some odd years yeah. in order to, to, to get through with that. Yeah. This guy has made us go from, you know, basically all that was allowed here was hemp fiber from the Hmong people. Um, yeah. From that to the point where we're on the verge of being able to grow in our houses. What's the next big move? What's the next thing? The next thing just happened. It just happened about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Um, Kun Anutin <laughs> just signed the paper for the Marijuana and Hemp Act of Thailand. It should be released in the Global, or sorry, in the Royal Gazette tomorrow. Wow! And what that's going to allow? It's going to allow people. It's going to allow. It's going to allow us. It's going to allow the people to grow cannabis. H at how their much? House. How much? That's still to be determined. Now, even though it goes into the Royal Gazette tomorrow, mm -hmm. they have 120 days before it actually yeah. takes effect. And they're going to take that 120 days to, to sort of make the roadmap to see how much people can grow, where are you going to register it, how are you going to grow it, uh, how wow. are they going to regulate it. So for, for um, purposes of research, um, I think that it would be behoove you to perhaps give me some seeds and I could perhaps, you know, for yes. research, research for purposes. For research purposes, yes. I can definitely make that happen. Well, and the question, okay, the question I think everybody, including our photographer over here, <laughs> wants to know yep. is, um, can we smoke? Can we can we walk out in the street with a joint? I mean, we're, 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 what's the law now? As a, like, still smoking is still, is still looked at as using drugs in their eyes. Smoking is still not accepted as a, 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 it's not an acceptable practice of consumption at this point. Oh. Even though the bong comes from Thailand. Yeah. Like, the one like, Thai I, I word. Thought, I thought it's been moved off of the narcotics list. It has been moved off of, it, mm. it's been moved off of the narcotics list, so, Again, how do they, if it's moved off of the narcotics list, how are they going to tell us we can't smoke it? Like, I mean, it, it's a non-narcotic. Right? Like, if I wanted to smoke broccoli, I could smoke broccoli. <laughs> Nobody could tell yeah. me not to. Okay, so so right now it's still vague, but yes. I probably won't go to jail if I... You probably won't go to jail. Like, uh, the the a law that came into place on December 9th basically said that we, you can't be incarcerated for cannabis anymore. Um, they can ask you to do a rehabilitation program, but any sort of rehabilitation program they, they put out, it's got to be better than a, a stint in the, the Bangkok Hilton. You would think. Yeah. You would think. That's amazing. So there's still a lot of gray area. Sure. Yeah. yeah there's yeah. a lot of gray area, but it's getting better yeah. and it, it's, it's happening so fast. Well, let's go back to you, Marissa, and how, you know, you're like the queen of Marijuana. I'm not, okay, I, I shouldn't say that either, should I? Queen of marijuana, <laughs> should I? But maybe not. Maybe not. No. <laughs> but but empress. You, you, yeah, empress. <laughs> empress. Yes. empress. But how did you get into into all of this? And 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 tell us about the scene here. I mean, because you, you know, every time I follow you on Instagram or Facebook, whatever, I see there's some activity going on. There's some club you have going. Tell us about the scene. Like specifically the cannabis scene. Yeah, how did yeah. you get into it and what, are, what what's happened in, in this short while? I mean, the gateway was really the, the podcast and through the podcast in each episode, I just met more and more people that are sort of, I would consider like the highest level of people in this industry at the moment. So I mentioned the first uh, episode was uh, the Highland Network guys, who were the original cannabis activists in Thailand, Arun Avery and Guide Sunrak. They're the ones that are okay. quoted in every article about cannabis, like yeah. in the first paragraph, basically. Right. And they have this uh, Facebook page, Gantach Horton in Thai, and then Highland Network in English. And they have Cute. how many hundreds of thousands of followers? Yeah. Like, the the Gantachorn has hundreds of thousands. They have the thousands. biggest audience. So they're, they're like really sort of the go to for information about like current events, I would say. Is there any statistic or a data at all, like how many people in Thailand smoke? Is there any rough? idea there I mean mm -hmm. I've read a lot of statistics that have came out but I I, I don't think we can really uh, I don't think we can count on those statistics because mm -hmm. people are still very cautious about yeah. cannabis so they're not gonna come out and say oh yeah I use cannabis I use cannabis 
Um, yeah. But still, it, 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 it showed a very low percentile of people yeah. in, in the country that actually use cannabis on a regular basis. Oh, really? Like, mm. it was in the 1% to 2%. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, according to statistics, and I'm, 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 I, I didn't read them recently, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. but it, it was in that range. Okay. Uh, personally, I think that number's up to more 10, in the 10% percentile. Mm. Okay, so yeah, so you started interviewing people, you started getting yeah. to know them, and, and then, then like, and then the episode two was um, the Chino Wants, which is basically like our generation of the Chino Wants who are um, involved in research at uh, Gonken University, yep. right? Really? Yeah, and um, yeah, so Sandy is like this master grower, Sandy Chino Watt, and we've become like good friends. Her brother's Bo. He also knows my cousin in Bangkok. Um, so that was a really interesting episode because they talked about you know what what they're doing now, what the research is for, and then mm -hmm. episode three was our good friend Bob Alaya who. Yo is an advocate. Yeah. She Dear used friend. it with her mother, who was like at home <sighs> ill, so she had, you know, this perspective of using it for for medical use. Which yeah, yeah is oh, like, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then what was episode four? Oh, we went to Petlana Farm, yep. which was so beautiful. I mean, where is it? Lampang. Yeah. We should go there. We should take you there, like Love on a trip. To. Yeah, we're, we're we want to do tours where Ryan does like a day trip where you like you know go and eat like the cannabis noodle soup and like mm -hmm. tour the farm and that kind of thing. So Sounds that's lovely. One yeah. of the things that we'll be doing like coming up. Yeah, I see yep. some people behind the camera will also be joining this tour. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then what was episode five? Then we went to Golden Triangle yep. Group, which was oh my god! I, I saw it's like the biggest marijuana operation in Thailand. Now they're they're focused on CBD, mm. but um, they're definitely moving towards. They're they're planning for THC. It yeah. seems like anyone who's growing CBD, from what I understand, is planning to grow THC. Can we so say back to we'll come back yeah. to your podcast, but exactly. So so what's the difference? What's mm. the difference? I mean, between like, the CBD like what's and what's the CBD? What's a you know. So CBD, THC, uh, and there's you know there's a handful of other ones out there. They're all cannabinoids. Um, they they're are what? cannabinoids. Um, they're compounds produced by the cannabis plant. They're mainly fo they're mainly uh, concentrated in the trichomes of the plants, um, which is the resin that's that's on the plants. Um, and there's a there's so many cannabinoids out there. The ones that we're really focused on right now are THC and CBD. Um, THC is the psychoactive compound, which gets, gives us the, the euphoric effect. Yeah. Um, CBD doesn't really have a psychoactive uh, effect, but it does have a lot of medicinal uh, values to it. Right. Um, so that's the one I give to my mom. Yeah. Right. The first one is the one I give to myself. Well, 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 it, depends. well it depends on what oh. the condition is, because the THC one, I think there's more medicinal benefit I mean, you know about that right. because yeah, he used to work in like care for elderly people. Right. And he saw firsthand like. And they're both share some of that. legally extracted now. They are both legally extracted now. Yes. Okay. Um, through one way or another. Um, yeah. GPO, uh, the government pharmaceutical organization, they've been extracting uh, THC and CBD since 2018. Um, started out in their facilities in Pratumtani, and they started out by extracting all the confiscated brickweed from uh, from Lao. Which, I mean, yeah, there was a lot more than just THC and CBD in that. Oh, sure. I, I heard <laughs> this nasty, nasty mm. stuff. Right. Yeah. Ugh. So, okay, so sorry, back to, to your, yeah, so this community that, that, that has been created. Yeah, so the Golden Triangle Group Operation, it's, it, it's, it's in the, what university? Uh, Rachapat. Rachapat University. And it was this, like, the first indoor grow that I saw, and they're growing um, CBD, but very high high CBD, like I think there's like 20% CBD or something in their strain, right? Which is very high, isn't it? What's it normally? Well, it depends. I mean, the, the CBD strains have been, been developed a lot over the course of the last uh, 10 years. And it started out with the main grower at Rachapat, Jaime. Jaime, uh, he's the owner of Resin Seed. This guy's a legend, this oh. is yes. a Spanish guy. He's the original breeder of Canatonic. And Canatonic was one of the, it was, it was Jaime and this other guy, um, Larry Ringo, who started the CBD strains. Before these two guys, CBD was wasn't never been heard of. Um, so Canatonic started. Uh, I don't know if he started it in Spain or if he started it in California, but it, it was very popular in, right. in, in California. And um, he's developed that into what they're growing at uh, Rachapat right now at GTG, which is uh, he's developed it. He's bred it out further. And now it's called Raksa. Okay, so there's a lot of um, international experts coming in, um, but you seem uh, you're saying there's also a lot of movement in the Thai 
you know, Thai well, people. Well, this company is Thai owned and all the growers are like university graduates, right? From the yeah. agricultural department. So, oh, um, nice. but just the expertise, um, I would say came from Spain for this particular operation. Right. Um, yeah. And yeah, there are other two master growers that are there. I mean, I trained these guys. I've worked with these guys for, for years and years and years. Yeah. Um, and they came on and then eventually Jaime came over and really just took these guys yeah. to another level. And as a foreigner, is it, is it, I mean, are you concerned that things could change back? I mean, is, is Thailand being welcoming of foreigners coming in with, with this expertise? I mean, yes, they've been welcoming uh, to a degree. I mean, I, I started out in the very beginning with this. Um, I, I went into the, the, the royal palace to, to present something to, to King Rama Ten in 2018 october 2018 we, we had a presentation with uh, a couple of, a couple big players in there um it's, it's been extremely welcoming i mean mm. it, if i look if i compare it back to like california mm. at california every single city council meeting that that happens that it's regarding cannabis there's always a group of people there saying that you know listen cannabis you're going to poison my kids with cannabis you're, you're you know you can't you know we have schools here it's bad I haven't met one person. Really? I'm literally. I'm. I'm. I'm trying to think of one person that had anything bad to say about cannabis here. So yet, yeah, I mean, you know, you were saying earlier that there's perhaps a stigma, but it, not in the same way then as the West. Right. I mean, perhaps there's something lower. Yeah, but the thing is, the stigma used to be so strong, right, when we were young. Yeah. So how has it shifted completely I know, the other I way now it. with that same generation of elder Thai people? Who are so conservative about everything else? I can't really understand yeah. it either. Because they switched it from <laughs> bongs to sublingual drops. Uh. You know, like still, I mean, a lot of people will look at people smoking a bong and say, "Okay, look at those lazy stoners." There, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't look nice. But then there's like for you, like smoking a vape pen, right? No, like, he didn't smoke a vape pen. Uh. It was a, um, it was a yamong. Oh, it oh. was Yamong that he, that he was holding up to himself, but it was. Uh, <laughs> I saw the Yamong one too, but there was also a vape pen one. You know, like really? how there was like some presentation where he had these like the Doctor like, Gunja. Yeah, guns? I'm pretty sure that was. Okay. It couldn't have been a vape pen okay, because gonna, vaping is I'm still very illegal and, here. Right. Yeah, but maybe that will end soon, hopefully. Right. So vaping is still illegal. Vaping across the board, cigarettes, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, uh, nicotine, yeah. illegal. Still, it's not accepted as a smoking, you mm -hmm. know, cannabis mm -hmm. isn't accepted as smoking yet. Right. Uh, they're going that way, though, mm. uh, at least with the CBD, I've heard them talk. Yeah. So there's now this club you've got? Or, or the OG the Club. The OG Club, well, yes. Tell me about that. The OG Club is, um, you know, it, it's, going through a, it, it's going through a lot of transformations at the moment. What's OG um, short for? Um, OG is actually a cannabis strain. It's mm. one of my favorite cannabis strains out there. And... Um, a lot of people think that the OG in that means original gangster, but really it means ocean grown. It was huh. OG Kush was ocean grown Kush. Um, and, you know, they, they've used it. Uh, it. It means original gangster. Right now, a lot of people use it really as just a, original as, as right. somebody who's, who's, who's been brought up in the game. Yeah. So what's the club? School. The old. OK, so the the club is basically just a place that that we can actually start doing events i want to start doing cannabis education courses especially if we have 120 day, 120 days until people are going to be able to grow at their house yeah so we're going to start doing cannabis education courses there uh, we just recently moved locations to a, a place that's a little bit more suitable for mm -hmm. cannabis education mm -hmm. and we're going to start up camp cannabis there where people can come in, we're gonna have uh, educational courses on a weekly oh, basis. Fine. You can come in, you can spend the night, you can have a good time. Uh, we have a bar, we've got a restaurant there. It's uh, it's a, just a fun location. We're signing you up for the first course, Pam. Please, <laughs> oh my God, seriously, yeah. I'm in, I'm in. That's not, can Tiki come? Yes. Yep. Okay, All right, perfect. Yep, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay, and then um, how open, I mean, so how do people find this club? Well, you can start out by, by checking us out like on the Perfect High podcast. I'm actually probably going to try to do a podcast in the next uh, month or so and, and, and so right. that people know about what the place is. Mm. On um, Spotify and YouTube. Yep. It's on YouTube. Spotify. There's a website, theperfecthigh.tv. Mm -hmm. .tv. Okay. Yeah, and there's also a Facebook page, The Perfect High. Right, yeah. okay. So, I mean, how, how are you all, because, you know, you've been in the Chiang Mai society for a long time. How, how are people reacting to, to your new venture? Everyone wants to know more. Everyone like like thinks that I'm like some sort of authority on this, and they, there's always so many like questions about it. Um, 
Yeah, and people keep asking you about the business side of it. Everyone seems to want to like get in on it and right. invest in some way. And they you've, ask me like, how can how can you invest? You've um, started a business, right? Um, so you know, my mom has Sabu Sabu, which is like a you know cosmetic natural body care company. So when you have that type of license now, you're also permitted to make CBD products. Oh. Um, so we're we're in the testing phase right now of making like sort of like my own line, like subline of Sabu Sabu that are like CBD infused body products. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But weren't you guys starting a business? or something now? Maybe Do we have the podcast together. Yeah, and, podcast like together. Okay. and then he's doing like consulting and he's also working on a, a, a grow. So okay. that's like his own right. thing. Yeah. yeah, but it's interesting what you say about everyone wanting to get into it. Like we talked earlier about um, Kitty. Sorry, what's her name? Yeah, uh, yeah, Kitty. I interviewed her. She's a Thai lady and she's... Um, I interviewed her last two oh my gosh two years ago yeah. and she was talking about how she wants Thailand to become like kind of the the the, the Nasdaq of marijuana for Asia Pacific and, yeah. and you know uh, like a stock market as, as such and um and then you you know we've got some friends who who are now like growing doing hydroponic greenhouses and so are there opportunities are there business opportunities to be had out there and there. how secure is it there definitely is business opportunities to be had out there. Um, it's not, it's, it's, we're still sort of in a gray area. So I'd say I'd recommend, you know, holding off until we actually have some clarity on the laws. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have done what, what Golden Triangle has done and they've tried to get in on the CBD game mm -hmm. until the laws for THC happen and then they're going to slowly try to convert to THC. Um, when is that happening? Hopefully we'll have a good outline in the next 120 days. Oh, okay. Um, but, I mean, the, the CBD market is extremely flooded right now. There's a lot yeah. of people that are coming in with just the business mentality, thinking that they're going to come in, they're going to grow CBD. Um, I'm seeing the numbers that they're saying. They're talking about selling CBD isolates here for, you know, upwards of a million baht per kilo, where CBD isolates around the world go for approximately 10,000 baht per kilo. Uh, Three hundred US a little dollars. Bit silly. Mm. Yeah. So there's a lot of there's there's a lot of uh, I don't know. There's a lot of scams going on in the moment. Such as. Such as people saying, "Listen, we're going to start this farm. We're going to sell it for a million baht. Look at this. Uh, look at this pitch deck. We're going to make billions of dollars." Mm. But realistically, the CBD market in the country, there's not there's not a big enough market for it. If we're in a country of sixty some odd million people. And like I was saying, if the 10% of them, yeah. you know, actually use it, you know, we have 6 million people that are going to use a product out of that 10 million, out of that 10%, maybe 1% are going to be on a regular basis, Right. you know, so we have 600,000 mm. people that are going to be buying products. So, um, wow. Okay. So do you think we'll ever get to a point of, you know, let's say Amsterdam, where we actually become a tourist destination for this? It's been talked about. Um, it, it's been talked about uh, recently, talking about doing sandbox models for uh, cannabis use. Um, they have not given us, they haven't given us any structure of what that looks like yet. Who's they? How do you communicate? Who's they? Who's us? Is there like some kind of, how does information get out and about? Um, there's, I, I follow a lot of the Thai news, but great places to, to follow um, Ganja Chon, Highland. Ganja Chon. Yes. Um, Kitty, uh, I mean, she's uh, she's probably one of the most vocal activists, and yeah. you know, and, and she's bilingual. She speaks, you know, she's bilingual, so she gets all the information out in both Thai and English. Could you give us some links afterwards? Sure. Yeah. yeah, so we can share it with our with yeah. our viewers. So, how do, how are you seeing the future of of Thailand's growth? And weed. Green. Yeah. Green. <laughs> 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 I mean. Yeah, it's definitely, it's, it's a green future. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of things that need to be worked out. I mean, what I w where I would like to see it go is I would love to see, I'd love to see the California model. What they did with uh, Proposition 215 in California, I still think it was the best thing that they could have ever done. Um, it could was you explain home that? Yeah, people, patients were allowed to grow their own cannabis at home. You could grow, you could have six mature plants, 12 immature plants. And you can grow the cannabis that you want in the methods that you want and use it in the way that you want. Um, I think that's the best model out there. And people that weren't able to grow, people that live in apartment complexes, people mm -hmm. that just don't have the ability, they don't have a green mm -hmm. thumb, they could, take their, they could take their prescription, they could go to a collective, they mm -hmm. could give the, the, their prescription to a collective, and the collective was allowed to grow six plants for them 
and then provide them with the medicine. Oh, that's nice. It, it makes a lot of sense. Like a little community garden. Exactly. Community green garden. Lovely. Keep it community based and I think yeah. you're going to get the highest grade products around the country that way. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's going to be the most, I don't think it's going to make money for the big guys though. Because I, I heard, and correct me if I'm wrong, and I jolly well could be, um, many, many years ago, I heard that, that, that uh, there was talk about all this happening. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm talking about a bit before 2018, but at the time, I heard that the, the tobacco monopoly, the Thailand mm -hmm. tobacco monopoly and the alcohol monopolies were kind of like debating who would get the, the biggest piece of the pie, how to split the pie, mm -hmm. and that was what took so long. And then when they came to some kind of agreement, I don't know. I mean, so how... Do you know how this is going to affect those two monopolies and how heavily involved are they in this new industry? I don't know. I think that's a little above my pay grade. Oh. Um, but yeah, I, I know that they've had interest in it. In it. I've talked with, uh, I've talked with uh, the Thai Tobacco mon Monopoly. Or I've talked to a couple companies that work with them. Um, and they've expressed interest in it, but I haven't seen them planting hundreds of thousands of rye yet. Apparently they are. Okay, maybe yeah, they are. I just yeah. haven't seen it with my own eyes. Yeah, and TTM, a Thailand Tobacco Monopoly, apparently in central Thailand, there's thousands of rye being planted. Okay, yeah. I believe it. Um, you know, I mean... I could be wrong. I really, really could be. Right. Yeah, they're, I'm, I'm sure they're trying to get in the game as well. Um, I know that they have talked about having smokable CBD through Thai traditional medicine. What, what do you mean, how? pre-rolls, CBD pre-rolls, oh, wow. uh, that's been brought up quite yeah. a bit, but I can't imagine that Thai Tobacco Monopoly is going to be selling those pre-rolls. No, wow. Um, so maybe you should talk about the cannabis formulations that are used in Thai traditional medicine, because that's something that's come I've back I've never even heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's, well, I, I, I don't know a lot of them. I oh, mean, but I mean, not, not the specifics, but just that they exist and that they're yeah. being, like, taught. Um, well, go on, you know. Well, something. I don't know more than that. Yeah. I mean, there's six, <laughs> there were 16 different uh, cannabis formulations that I think came from the King Rama V era. Um, I could be wrong on that, but I believe that's where, where they were put into play. Um, and there's 16 formulations and they use them for a variety of things. Um, I can't, I, I don't know the, the right. actual different formulations. Only a few of them actually use the flowers, um, but they have, they have treatments for a lot of different things with that. What I see though is Thai traditional medicine using this and still under the Thai traditional medicine, not under those 16 formulas, they are coming out with the sublingual drops and, and, and letting them use that. Mm. And what were they using for? What, what? Traditionally, I mean, I, I, a little bit of everything, the same things we use them for today. Yeah. So how's Thai um, weed ranked globally? I mean, I remember when I was a lot younger, it used to be, we used to be, have, be quite famous for it, right? Like right. around the world, like, ooh, you're from Thailand, ooh, good weed, good weed. Mm -hmm. And then like, you know, last time I went to Amsterdam, it was basically right at the, like the weakest joint in the shop, you know, because all these skunks and everything coming out. So yeah. how, how does it rank and, and how is it received now? Well, Thai, you know, Thai, like you said, Thai weed was some of the best in the world, you know, 40, 50 years ago. But um, the, it's been, we've been under prohibition here for so long and it's been very strict that the rest of the world has, has a, had an opportunity to really develop their cultivation skills. Yeah. While they're going up, Thailand was going down. They right. were forgetting everything. They, uh -huh. they, they weren't cultivating. Um, so at the point it's at today, sure, I really do appreciate Thai cannabis, yeah. but if you looked at the, at the grand scale of uh, quality yeah. and all that, the Thai cannabis wasn't, you know, at least a couple years ago, it's getting way better now, but a couple years ago, like I said, it wasn't even really grown here. No. It was at the lower end of the quality scale. Right. Um, so we're not going to get bricks anymore. I sure hope not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. What about people who are still concerned about the harm? I mean, you know, could you address that? People who are still like, ooh, scary, marijuana, stigma. Well, should ask them if they drink alcohol or smoke cigarettes because those things are scientifically proven to be significantly more impactful on your health <laughs> than, than cannabis. There you go. Right? They yeah. have no me medicinal value whatsoever and yeah. they're completely accepted by society. Yeah. Yeah. And our consumption is of it is completely controlled, whereas this other thing has benefits, proven benefits. So So where are you gonna go next with, with, with you know, your journey? I mean well, I mean I <laughs> like as soon as THC, as soon as these these laws clear about THC, I mean my whole goal here in Thailand from the beginning was to be able to create craft cannabis and craft cannabis products for the people. 
um, not the mass produced oh, stuff, okay. not the, the, the gas station CBD products that you see. I, I want to make really nice quality products and I want to make them with THC. I mean, CBD to me is more, it works great for a lot of people, mm -hmm. but it's not, uh, it's not what I, where, where, where my passion is. Yeah. So hence the education, because you mm -hmm. know, for me, frankly, a beer is a beer is a beer, even, okay, I don't have much taste, wines, I don't even know the difference that much. So with this, I, d I don't know if I would actually appreciate the craft behind it, right? So. I suppose it takes a lot of education yeah. it does. to get people there, mm -hmm. hence your, your latest initiative. Yeah, yeah and mm -hmm. people are learning, that, and you're seeing more and more craft users come out of the works every single day here. Um, they're learning themselves, they're growing at home, they're seeing what, what the potential of cannabis really can be. So, and I don't want to do the mass production. I want to make really right. good, high quality products that, that can treat patients, they can, they can be used recreationally, medicinally. Yeah. Um, everything across the board. How long do you think until we'll get there? To that 120 point? days. No. <laughs> <laughs> to that point? No, 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 no. no. Um, but maybe we'll have the framework laid out in 120 days. Um, hopefully, I can, you know, put some of our organic uh, solventless products on yeah. the market and uh, get those FDA approved so that they have some movement here in the country. Um, when we talk about the medicinal benefits, can you just? I mean, I know you're not doctors, but right. you know, just a general. What's so great about it? Well, I mean, THC and CBD, I think the perfect medicine is actually a combination of THC and CBD. Um, now, that medicine right there is used for a lot of patients. Um, the higher doses of it get used with, uh, I mean, a lot of cancer patients are using this with like the Rick Simpson method. And Rick Simpson, yeah, he was one of the guys that, that put together this... Um, a protocol, the Rick Simpson protocol, then what he had people doing was using 60 grams of cannabis oil mm -hmm. in 90 days. That was the basis of the protocol. Okay. He was really helping out a lot right. of people and I've seen people use the protocol with, with great success. Now that's about 1% of your, that's less than 1% of your, your medicinal users. Um, now a lot of people are, I mean, are using very low doses. You don't need a lot. A right. couple drops, a gram a day would tranquilize an elephant. <laughs> um, but I mean, a, on the lower doses of things, mm -hmm. you know, a couple milligrams, 10, 20, 30 milligrams yeah. a day is helping people with sleep. Um, uh, it's helping people with pain. It's an anti-inflammatory. Um, it's helping people with, I mean, a variety of ailments, uh, anxiety, depression. Mm. I could go on. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what about addiction? With... Uh, any, any of this, um, you know, because some people are afraid they'll get addicted because it's mm. dr drugs. I mean, right. How addictive is all of this? I would say it's very mildly. I mean, I think pe people do not develop. Um, you don't develop physical addictions to the to the plant or to the to the substance. Right. People can develop psychological addictions to ah, the plant, where right. you know they, they they like to smoke. They like to smoke every day before bed, or this and that. Or they if they don't smoke, they get grumpy. Um, but it's not like if they're, they're not going to go through withdrawals. So it's all good. <laughs> yes. It's That's all, what it we're really saying. Is. <laughs> Everything is good. In conclusion. <laughs> but on the CBD side of things as well, again, people are very concerned. They think it's a drug. Is this CBD? CBD will have, I mean, CBD, you're, you're not going to have any sort of addictive uh, relationship with the CBD. Right. So um, let's just go back a bit about registration. I know we have the 120 days, blah, right. blah, blah. But if I want to plant a little seed, what, what do I have to do legally? So as of today, if, if this whole 120 th day thing wasn't happening, yeah. you, you would have had to start a community enterprise and with seven, seven households in the same area, you could have came together and you could have grown cannabis uh, to donate. Since when? Oh, since 2019. Really? And, yeah. and I could have just donated the, and the kept flower. flower and kept a bit no, no, they're very, very strict. No, I'm sure you that's never to happened donate. That's, once ne that's never the happened country. before, Pim. You have to donate <laughs> all the flour. Right. But <laughs> they're talking about, uh, Kun Anutin is talking about creating an app. And I'm sure it's going to work flawlessly. Um, <laughs> and uh, so that you can, you go in and you register with the app, and the app will basically register you with everybody, um, right. ev all the relevant parties. So that should be coming out in 120 odd days. That's what we hear. I love that you're the first 
ฟอร์คือเฝรั่งฟอร์เนอร์คือคือไลค์สนุทินเย้อันนี้คนไทยนะคะพูดภาษาไทยแบบเพอร์เฟกต์นะจริงเหรอจริงได้ก็อยู่มาจะ20ปีแล้วไงใช่ไหมว้าวไม่ใช่โอเคงั้น you're not the ฝรั่งเลย so um so tell us like Because for some people, as you were mentioning earlier, it's just smoking at night before going to bed. Whereas for, for other people, like yourselves, it's actually a, it's a, it's a community that that you're you're bringing together. I mean, I, there never was a real community here, but now with people with knowledge and expertise and interests and you know, tell me about this this loose community and what roles people have. You know, mm-hmm. like is there someone here doing photography? Is there some? I, I don't know. Like, what is this community that you've got going and building up? Maybe you can talk about the Buri Ram event. Was that in 2019? Yeah, Buri Ram event was in 2019. But I mean, the community is all—it's it, getting everybody's getting together to support one industry. Mm. Um, there's a lot of organic farmers that are coming out of the woodworks right mm. now, trying to put in their input. Um, there's a lot of people that are creating fertilizers. There's people that are creating soils. There's people that are creating all sorts of products oh. that that are that are supporting industries. Um, Like the guys up at GTG, one of their one of their guys uh, created all the lights that are there. Like so, ah. he he made all the lights. Um, so there's a lot of people coming together to support the industry, not just the growers. Right. Is there any innovation and the exciting? Um, I mean, gadgets, uh, toys. Uh, I don't know if there's anything new coming coming along, but to, you know, 10 years ago, looking for growing equipment here, it was non-existent. Like you had to go and spend hours and hours and hours in Taiwatsudu, looking at different things and looking at lights and trying to order special yeah. lights or yeah. trying to take lights off of the the yeah. streets just so that you can get decent lighting out here. Mm. Um, yeah. So the industry is coming together. There's a lot of people that are putting that are that are creating these products that that before were not available here. And so, how often do you all meet? Do you have like, at this at this club? Is there like a A weekly get together, monthly, nightly. Um, events we do, we do, we do events. Uh, we do a barbecue every weekend. Um, so actually, we That's just nice. started that out last weekend, but uh, it's happening. Yeah. It'll happen every weekend. It was great. Friday, Saturday. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh, all of it. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Excellent. So yeah, we'll do it every weekend yeah. out there, and then we're open all the time. Uh, we're going to be putting out. Uh, special events that we'll be doing, and we'll, we should be doing a few events. Look forward There's to. There's a it. large yeah. selection of beer. Oh yeah. Yeah. Crafty. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> thank you very much, Ryan yep. Doran, Marissa Marcatelli. Did I pronounce it right? I no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that again. Marissa Marcatelli. Jesus Christ! I've I known know, you but forever. it's okay. It's okay. Okay, right. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> Ryan Doran, and. Marissa Marcitelli, which I just mispronounced again. <laughs> <laughs> just stick with it; it's fine. <laughs> okay. Damn it. Thank you very much, Ryan Doran and Marissa, my dear friend. <laughs> Whose surname I can never pronounce. It's, it's a mouthful. Yeah. It's, it's a mouthful. Marcitelli. There we go. <laughs> so thank you, and um, it's been a really good conversation, thank and I've learned a lot, yeah, and I can't wait to get those little seedlings. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for having me on your couch. 120 days. 120 days. Mm. We're getting there. <laughs> no. Thank right. you. So I need to.